The Aviation Matters bring you all the latest information and events across the country under the Honorable Minister of Aviation on executives, policies, projects, and everything that's related to the aviation transportation industry. Stay tuned. This week's series will be focusing on the Nigerian Meteorology Agency, a federal government agency charged with the responsibility to advise the government on all aspects of meteorology. Projects, prepare and interpret government policies in the field of meteorology and to issue the weather and forecast for the safe operations of aircraft, ocean-going vessels and oil rigs. NIMIC comes into existence by an act of the National Assembly, enacted on the 21st of May 2003 and became effective on 19th June 2003, following presidential assent. The act also makes the responsibility of the agency observe, collate, collect, process and disseminate all meteorological data and information within and outside, coordinate research activities among staff and publish scientific papers in various branches of meteorology in support of sustainable social economic activities in Nigeria. Director General of NIMIT, Professor Mansour Baku Matazu, gives more details on the mandate of agency. Uh, NIMIT, as the name implies, is the Nigerian Meteorological Agency. Uh, we're charged with the responsibility of uh, advising government, uh, especially federal government and other uh, strata of governments on all aspects of weather, climate, and water-related uh, issues uh, in support for, for sustainable national development and also for safety of lives and uh, property in the country. Improved climate risk, early warnings and adversary services, the agency's annual flagship program, the Seasonal Climate Prediction, SCP, remains the most potent and comprehensive climate risk and early warning adversary in the country. The agency does not only release these weather and climate information to Nigerians, but goes a step further to reel out the implications of these climate and weather observations on different sectors of the country's economy. In addition, the high impact based weather forecast is one of newly introduced products of the agency internationally, especially in Africa. The Nigerian Meteorology Agency has become a force. Little wonder why the agency has earned several international standard organizations' IOS certifications, including IOS 9001 in 2009, for Aero Meteorology and the World Meteorological Organization, and many more. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the, the, the whole gold is under one umbrella, and that umbrella is uh, atmosphere, and which has no clear demarcated the boundary and that is why there's a popular saying in the global change climate change arena that uh, uh, you think about climate change globally uh, but you act locally uh, so now it been a very old organization we've been existing and we project it even the nigerian independence we've been existing as far back as 1887 uh, so having this long archive historical data we have established, based on the global scenario, that there is climate change due to global warming, and as a result of uh, increasing emission of greenhouse gases, which changes global temperature pattern. And this global temperature pattern now ignites what is called change in climate, which is called climate change. And this climate change has multiplier implication, effects, and impacts. But when you think locally in Nigeria, based on the available record from NIMED of over 130 years data, <clears throat> we have established local indicators that shows that yeah, globally in the country, we have climate change indicators that shows that there is changes in the Nigerian climate system in response to global climate change. And this change is in form of change in rainfall pattern, uh, the beginning and the end of the season, length of the season, and also increasing rainfall intensity amount. Uh, recently this year, some location experienced over 150, getting to 200 millimeter of rain within a single day. That has never happened within the century. And also we've been experiencing 
tremendous increase in temperature as a result of heat waves, uh, unusual also cold episodes uh, in 2015 and sometime three years ago, some areas in Nigeria experienced near zero degrees Celsius. So, uh, and all these are all signs and symptoms of localized climatic change in response to global climate change. And what NIMED is doing is to continue to monitor on the long term so that we monitor the trend of the changing climate and also monitor on short term to be able to predict the weather and climate in order to provide effective advisories for people to do two things, to adapt to the changing climate and then also on one hand and on the other hand to mitigate the effects of the changing climate. And we do so in provision of several products and services across the country and beyond uh, for to be able to uh, make Nigerian citizens adapt to this changing climate and also become aware even of, of, of the climate change as a concept and phenomenon. The development of climate services to inform decision making has accelerated in recent years. One area where there remains a strong call for attention is in rebalancing the ownership and responsibility for climate services from provider-led and user-informed to practices of co-exploration, co-design, co-development where providers and users of weather climate services have more equal voices. The function of NIMIT includes, amongst others, the issuance of weather and climate forecasts for all sectors of economy and provision of adversary to governments and general public on all aspects of meteorology. Yeah, these this are very critical. As I mentioned earlier, our services cut across all sectors and also on these sectors, uh, also it's no surprising that they are also correspond to all the economic sectors and socio-economic sectors of the country. So uh, the critical one you have mentioned, environment and health, are very critical because of the influence on the well-being and the socio-economic status in the society. Uh, we do provide short-term and long, medium-term and uh, long-term annual products and services. So for environment, uh, we have a product like seasonal climate, climate prediction and which is one of our flagship products that our minister Santuari Sika annually, by, I think the first quarter, released to Nigerian public. And in this, uh, we have uh, the general rainfall and temperature pattern across the country for the incoming season. And that we try to link the forecast with advisories. And it as advisories also, we have environment as a component, especially as it regards to how the rainfall pattern in terms of onset cessation, total amount, intensity, etc., and how, how this can trigger some environmental problems, environmental concerns, and then how we can also mitigate uh, with the knowledge uh, before, uh, before us in this uh, product. So we provide what we call uh, climate early warning, in the concept of climate early warning system, in the provision of uh, seasonal climate prediction with advisors, especially on the environment. We also do have some uh, short-term and medium-term products, like at 33 days interval, 72 hours interval, we produce what we call high impact weather. So focus, and this focus is to focus certain weather phenomena, uh, not to just say that it will rain in Abuja or Lokoja, uh, to even give the estimate of the amount of the rain and uh, also what that amount could trigger uh, from scientific experience and background. So, and that is what we call impact-based forecasting, uh, to be able to tell what the forecast, what certain weather, predicted weather will do, and not only what it will be. You know, it's just climate, what we call uh, climate service value chain, is, is, is just like agricultural value chain, whereby we have the farmer, uh, cycle in the, up, up to the production uh, level of the raw materials and or maybe defining uh, the outcome. But mostly in the climatic uh, weather and climate value chain, uh, we in NIMED, we, 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 our status is producers. So, and producers generate the forecast and the prediction and the advisories. And uh, we then have 
a second layer of status that we call enablers. And these are enabling ministries, departments, and agencies that carry and relay the information to the users. Uh, and then, of, of course, the last mile, what we call the last bucket, last mile, and those are the direct consumers and they are the users. Uh, but at times, we experience a, a sort of disconnect, a disconnect in the sense that uh, damage, we are 2,000 in number, uh, present in 54 locations across the country, uh, present also in uh, 24 airports, uh, six zonal offices, and uh, headquarters here in Abuja. Uh, so uh, covering 200 million plus population requires effective partnership, effective coordination. Okay. He also talks about the services rendered, its partnerships with other government agencies. Uh, we have uh, in our mix uh, high-tech, the presence of satellite, uh, radar observation, and other remote sensing processes. So uh, we, we're doing a lot we can, because our product and services are perishable. And if you don't have effective partnership, uh, there's no way the information gets to the users. So we do have partnership with Ministry of Agriculture, Water Resources, Environment. Uh, some of them even rely on us uh, even to, 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 make, to, to plan their activities. I will mention two organizations, uh, National Emergency Management Agency, uh, rely on our focus and updates to even plan their annual activities on disaster mitigation, response, uh, and other processes. Uh, for Nigerian Hydrological Agency also, they, we give them update on rainfall pattern and they also wait for our forecast to be able to couple their model on flood forecast for, for their, in which they issue around April, after we must have issued our forecast in January and February. So uh, we have also collaborated with the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Health, of course, I forgot to mention uh, earlier from your question that we have specialized products for health. We have direct focal point that is collaborating with Center for Disease uh, Control and also Federal Ministry of Health, Department of Public Health. So we provide them information and a focus on meningitis. We provide on uh, uh, also high temperature that can trigger heat stroke. So in this, we have a new products, Climate and Health Bulletin, that we'll share with you after this interview. And this bulletin also is being shared at the Federal Executive Council, which provides uh, not only uh, weather and climate-related disease forecasts, but also advisories on, on, on even status of medication. There are certain weather and climate uh, scenarios that can affect even the performance of the medicaments that we're having. So in that uh, bulletin, it uh, provides such information. So uh, we, we do all these in, in three layers, as I made mention. Uh, one layer is that we, 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 we give public weather forecasts for public, the one we pu publish and then broadcast on NT and other media outlets uh, to public on daily basis. And we also do support services, like I mentioned, through partnership with these MDAs. And then we do telemed products and services for an organization, for a, a company or consortium uh, that is working in a particular field and it requires long-term or telemed uh, service, we provide such uh, uh, focus and products which helps in implementing and reducing loss uh, in, in all facets of the Nigerian economy, agriculture, water resources, uh, marine, maritime, oil and gas, uh, we provide uh, such tailor-made services. Okay. The recently acquired skills by some West African countries' personnel through the technical support of NIMIT will play a critical role as the West African country seeks to get its own International Standard Organization IOS certification. This will not only boost their global acceptability, but also improve upon the quality of their workforce as the trained officers are expected to transfer same to their colleagues. For a successful and sustainable socioeconomic development of any community or nation, capacity development, regardless of limited resources, must be emphasized. Therefore, it is in view and realization of this that the Nigerian government, through the Nigerian Meteorology Agency, NIMIT, approved the transfer of technical staff from the agency to travel to Gambia in order to train the Gambian meteorological personnel. The agency under the leadership of Professor Matazu has also intensified the provision of daily weather forecasts to other African counterparts like Liberia and Sierra Leone. 
Recently, the Minister of Aviation, Senator Hadi, accompanied by the DG of Nimitz, were in Gambia to witness the inaugural graduation of some of Gambia's meteorological students trained by Nimitz in aeronautical meteorology under an MOU agreement. This, the Director General revealed that Nimitz had entered into private-public partnership with other organizations to improve its services. Okay, yeah, you know, um, there's, there's a lot of sensitization and people are utilizing more of our products in the country. Uh, so including even uh, outside the country, uh, Nigeria supports Liberia and Sierra Leone on daily basis with their forecast at no cost, courtesy of the Nigerian government. Uh, we also provide support to Malawi, Mozambique, Gambia for the for the last four years. The minister this year uh, went to during the graduation of uh, Gambian med personnel that now made staff uh, trained for the last two years, and, and we've been doing that for the last four years. So uh, with all these and also the challenges that you've mentioned on climate change, it now creates a stronger demand for our services. And these demands and these services, most of which now are even tailored services, services that people can, can get on uh, the comfort of their houses and their phones. Uh, so, so this is, is really capital intensive, the demand and what you intend to also provide to be able to provide such services in form of equipment, instrumentation, personnel, capacity building. And uh, uh, generally COVID uh, came 2020-21 uh, with a lot of challenges and uh, as an agency of government also for sustainability, uh, even with the full government support, we are very uh, happy uh, and gratitude to this government. I will give an example like this year, our capital release, we got 100% release uh, of our capital. Uh, as, 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 as good as this is, uh, but when you look at the demand on ground, uh, so we need to really open up through partnership uh, in order to save cost in implementation of progress programs and activities. On one hand, and on the other hand, also increase your, our revenue uh, to be able to, pro, to, to, to remain sustainable and also provide effective and efficient services. And that is why we've engaged in PPP. Uh, we've started this for the last three years. And just last few months, uh, we've entered into partnership with several organizations. We've gotten equipment at no cost to the country, and uh, in which also we begin to develop certain refined products so that we'll continue to share uh, this uh, revenue with the partners. And if we do this, uh, partners like tailor-made uh, products uh, normally pay, and this amount is not paying 100%, it's just recovery cost for, for, for us to be able to maintain equipment and then also continue to train our personnel. So presently, uh, we are, our revenue uh, uh, status is almost 90% from aviation uh, sector and 10% from the non-aviation sector. And that is not as good as it is, it's not too healthy. If there is uh, like the protocol, uh, the COVID challenge, so whereby at a time revenue from aviation you know, has dived to less than 10% of its original status. So uh, we, we're having a focus that in the next few years, we're going to be 50-50 from aviation and uh, also with the non-aviation revenue stream. And these are in form of uh, services from health, uh, services in the agricultural sector. Farmers could receive point focus on their phone and uh, with a certain with a token that will be deducted from their data and which will be shared between Nigerian Metropolitan Agency and the service providers with the other partners. And, and these are things that people normally uh, 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 renew this subscription on daily basis on their phones for certain uh, programs. But this, it can, you can even get health alert if you are asthmatic. So we, we, we could be sending a, a alert if there is threshold of uh, climatic system, environmental factors that could trigger meningitis, that could trigger uh, asthma 
Bothered by the growing food insecurity around Africa and Nigeria in particular, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMIT, and the Food Agricultural Organization are deliberately strategizing on best weather and climate services models to adopt in order to mitigate the negative impacts of weather on agriculture. According to the Director General, CEO NIMIT, Professor Mansour Baku Matazu, weather plays an important role in agriculture because it detects whether farmers would experience a bumper harvest or not. Weather has a profound influence on the growth, development and yield of crops in distance of pests and disease. In all this, and of course also for farmers, we, uh, we, we have started this on pilot scheme, which... Uh, uh, an organization is under CBN, NISAL. Uh, uh, we're targeting uh, 528,000 farmers to be able to give them refined products uh, that will direct their farming activities. And it is part of their loan that they uh, will be getting from CBN that they will, will get our service charge from. So in, in doing all this, uh, not forgetting also one of the fertile and high potential sector, that's the marine and maritime uh, sector also, they also rely on forecast, uh, marine meteorological forecast uh, for smooth operations of the maritime and marine industry. Uh, so in this, we have entered into partnership with NEMASA. In January, we will sign an MOU. We have already started giving them a preliminary rudimental forecast and in which we will now upgrade and then to also open another Kutu Kabeno angle. So by getting all this increase in the, our revenue, uh, it will give us more muscles also and direction to be able to do more, uh, not only to the aviation sector, we we'll expand and do more in other uh, socioeconomic uh, sectors of, of the country. And uh, we we'll sustain our staff strength and also expand and increase their welfare and instrumentation and equipment also will be maintained. Uh, most of the equipments uh, we, we operate with are highly they are very costly, even their maintenance, and most of which we have to even ship into the country. Professor Matazu says they are bringing in new innovation to the system in order to make limits compete to other meteorological agencies around the globe. We we, we want to uh, we, we want to graduate from from relevance to, uh, from visibility. We've been very visible now uh, in the public domain. Uh, but we want to transform and metamorphose from that relevance to, visi uh, to, to visibility to relevance. And this relevance, for one to know that uh, whatever action you're going to take, you need to integrate the, the information from NIMIT, and which will also have a positive input into your uh, life. And uh, as such, uh, we are coming up with new tailored products in all sectors, even the seasonal climate prediction we are doing. We want to begin to segment it to sectoral uh, pr products uh, that will be in the whole information at the federal level needs to be downscaled, need to be cascaded to the community level. And there's no way you access these communities without the full support of their state government and various local governments. The meteorological community over the years has been providing the report for the climate synopsis at the national, regional and continental and global levels. This is not different in Nigeria. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency produces weather and climate predictions at various timescales, including climate synopsis at quarterly and annual levels. The annual version over the years has been referred to as the Climate Review Bulletin.